Hey everyone, tons of items got reworked with this new preseason. You don't know what's going on anymore with what to build first or in general, and you're just confused. Don't worry, we've got you covered. The new itemization is not nearly as confusing as it may seem, and we're gonna help you get started with playing jungle in the preseason. Let's get into it. Opening the shop, you're gonna be hit with a lot of new words. The key one to pay attention to is Mythic. These are gonna be the most important items in your build, as they are the most powerful and you can only build one Mythic item each game. Legendaries are completed items, simple. And Epics are just components such as Sheen or Kindle Gem. Let's break down your new build starting with your new jungle items. Jungle items have entirely been removed for these two new ones, Ember Knife and Hailblade. They both have the same stats. Just like Hunter's Talisman, they give mana regeneration inside the jungle so you can spam your abilities. Also, damaging a monster will apply a burn on it for 5 seconds. Here's where they're a bit different. They both give you 12% Omnivamp in the jungle. Omnivamp is basically lifesteal and spell vamp all in one. Every instance of damage you deal will heal you. Of course, AoE damage heals you for only a third of the total amount. There's no difference on which item you buy based on your champion and starting route anymore. The only difference between these two items is the smite upgrade. Once you've used smite 5 times in the game, your jungle item will be consumed, and you'll get challenging smite with ember knife or chilling smite with hailblade. <laughs> don't worry though, you retain the stats from the initial jungle item. The omnivamp and mana region don't go away. This is merely a way for a jungle's inventory to not be cluttered. And that's it. The new jungle items are very simple. As a jungler, you're now able to immediately build the core items you want, instead of having to buy a completed jungle item first. We'll now cover the core builds we expect to see for each archetype played in the jungle, starting with assassins, limb bruisers, tanks, and AP junglers. As a quick note, there are two marksman junglers, Kindred and Graves. Since their meta builds are trending towards crit-based items, we recommend watching our AD itemization guide as a reference for them. There's a lot to cover for jungle, so we won't have time to cover them here. Starting with assassins, the first mythic we'll cover is Duskblade. It's very similar to before. Damaging a champion will deal a nice burst of damage and slow your opponent for a bit. It no longer works off stealth though, and it just has a 15 second cooldown. The interesting thing about it is that if an enemy champion you damage dies within 3 seconds of your last hit, you will go into stealth for 1.5 seconds. You may think this is awesome for all assassins, but it's particularly great for kamikaze champions such as Nocturne or Rengar. Typically, when they go in, they fully commit and end up trading their own life for the enemy ADC or mid laner. With Duskblade, they get extra bursts to instantly kill their target, but that stealth can help them reposition and get out alive, something which was unlikely in team fights before. Next up is a completely new item, Prowler's Claw. It gives similar stats, AD, Lethality, and Ability Haste, which is the new slightly less effective cooldown reduction, if you weren't aware yet. The active part of this item is a small dash that deals decent damage to your target, but the main appeal is that all damage you deal afterwards for 3 seconds is amplified by 15%. Assassins that don't immediately deal all their damage will love this item. For example, Lethality Rek'Sai would be insane with this item. Once you have full fury, use Prowler, then empowered E into ult for a massive burst finisher. The last assassin item is Eclipse. It gives AD, Lethality, and Omnivamp. This will be a more niche assassin jungle item. Damaging an opponent with two sources of damage will deal 8% max health damage and give you a burst of movement speed as well as a shield. As you may have noticed, all these mythics give all your other legendary items some extra stats. This one gives 4% armor penetration on each one. We believe Eclipse will be for games where you're against a ton of tanky champions that you can't assassinate easily. The max health damage, shield, and percent penetration will help get into fights where you might choose to play a more bruiser-ish type of playstyle, which we often see assassins pivot to. And that's it for mythics. Legendaries mostly remain the same. Ghostblade, Edge of Night, Umbro Glaive and Sanguine Blade go virtually unchanged, but there's two new items you may consider for niche situations. Serpent's Fang is just a great new answer to shields. You deal extra damage into them, so if the enemy team has a lot of shields, make sure to pick this up. And the Collector is a crazy new item. It gives lethality, AD, and crit, but the passive is nuts. Dealing any damage to a target with 5% or less health will instantly execute them. Auto attack based assassins who can use the crit like Shaco and Rengar may really love this item to finish off their builds. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to consider checking out Skill Capped after this. We'll constantly be pushing tons of quality content over there during preseason and season 11 that you won't find anywhere else. You'll also have access to our Smurf commentaries page where you can ask our challengers questions free of charge and they will respond to you, which is perfect while the game is particularly confusing at the moment. Next up are Bruisers. The first mythic item we have to cover is Gore Drinker. Gore Drinker is literally a Darius Q on an item. It gives good stats. 
AD, health, ability haste, and a passive that gives you percentage AD based on your missing health. But the best part is definitely the active. Just like Darius, you hit everything around you and heal based on your missing health, which can get a little crazy. Champions like Hecarim or Jarvan who often get into the thick of things are probably gonna love this item. It allows them to have no fear as they dive and set a place for their team. Next up is Stridebreaker. It has some good stats with AD, attack speed, health, and haste. Passively, it also gives movement speed when you damage an enemy champion and gives all your completed legendaries extra movement speed. To be fair, the active isn't that impressive. You lunge forward a bit to deal decent damage and slow your target. We honestly think this item is just for champions who have a hard time getting in range in the first place based on the movement speed and lunge. It literally feels like an item made specifically for Udyr to help him get in range of his targets. We're not really sure who else would like this item, but if you have any ideas, let us know. The next two go hand in hand, Divine Sunderer and Trinity Force. Trinity Force is basically the same item. It gives similar stats and has the same passive. One small difference is that it does give you ramping attack damage the longer you're in a fight. Divine Sunderer is another Spellblade item. After using an ability, your next auto will deal 10% of a target's maximum health, healing you for half the damage done. If we're being honest, this seems closer to a top lane item rather than for junglers. It's aimed at countering tanks and as a jungler, you can pick who you're going for. So that's not really an issue you need to concern yourself with on your first item. Of course, if the enemy team is filled with tanks and you usually build Trinity Force, then maybe pivoting towards it could be a good option. On to our legendaries, Wit's End, Black Cleaver, Titanic Hydra, Guardian Angel, Sterex Gage, and Mob Mamordius all remain essentially the same. They have some small differences but you still build them in the exact same situations you built them before. Let's talk about what's new. Death Stance got pretty nerfed as an all-around defensive option. It's an answer to full AD team compositions now, so you can stop building this item every game. Bruisers finally got a QSS item that feels good to build, Silvermere Dawn. We wouldn't recommend completing this until your last item though, just sit on QSS most of the game if you need it. Chempunk Chainsword is just a bruiser version for Grievous Wounds. Lastly, we have the changes to Gunsu's Rage Blade. It gives attack speed and crit, but the passive converts all your crit chance into on-hit damage instead. It costs a lot less gold now and doesn't randomly give any AP, so it's an even better item than before for Master Yi. Moving on to tanks, the first mythic we have to look at is the new Locket of the Iron Solari. Riot has gone mad and given Locket its old passive back. All of your allies around you gain 5 armor and MR, which increases based on how many legendary items you've bought. For all the old school junglers, it's gonna be okay. No, you will not have to buy this every single game. It's not as strong as it was before, but it's still gonna be a great item to consider when you're going against champions like Kennen or Karthus. The passive plus the active shield will mitigate a lot of AoE damage. The other three tank items are Sunfire Aegis, Frostfire Gauntlet, and Turbo Chem Tank. All of these are built out of Bami Cinder and will have the Immolate Aura so you have some AoE damage. Starting with Sunfire Aegis, it's basically the same item but stronger. As long as you're damaging champions with your Immolate Aura, it begins to stack, dealing more damage. At full stacks, it causes your auto attacks to burn your enemies for Immolate damage over 3 seconds. This item will be great for tanks who actually auto attack frequently, such as Mundo or Sejuani. Next up is Turbo Chem Tank. This item is literally just Righteous Glory and Sunfire Cape in one. You can gain a burst of movement speed for 4 seconds towards enemies and slow them once you make contact. It'll be perfect for champions such as Ramus or Skarner and serves as a nice buff to them. Before, they had to get their jungle item and then Righteous Glory, but now they'll be able to get this effect much faster in the game. Finally, there's Frostfire Gauntlet, which is basically the same as the old Iceborne Gauntlet. You don't need to cast an ability to get the Frost Field though, it'll just be on a 4 second cooldown. But we feel like Riot's playtesting team really dropped the ball on balancing these items. There's a clear winner among these three and it's Frostfire Gauntlet for sure. Look at that passive! The more legendaries you buy, the bigger you get. You can actually go full kaiju in your opponents and there will be nothing they can do about it. We expect a hotfix the second the patch goes live. Speaking of legendaries, Riot didn't get too creative with the tank items. The following items are basically the same and will probably be built in the exact same situations you would build them before. Knight's Vow, Abyssal Mask, Frozen Heart, Randuin's Omen, Spirit Visage, Dead Man's Plate, and Warmog's Armor. There are a couple of big changes though. Zeke's Convergence became a lot easier to use. Instead of proccing off your ultimate, it now gives your ally extra damage for 4 seconds to whichever target you CC. Stone Plate now gives you a huge shield for 1 100% of the bonus health you've bought. This is the tank item in the late game and should likely be your 5th or 6th item every game. And lastly, old school players can rejoice. Force of Nature is back. 
health, magic resist, and in-combat movement speed made this item a fan favorite back in the day, and is looking just as strong as before. Finally, let's talk about AP Champions. This is a tricky one. The problem with this new preseason is the lack of runic echoes. It instantly fixed all mana issues for AP junglers. Without it, you're gonna go out of mana rather quickly, so we need a mana item. First, let's look at the AP mana mythics. All of these build out of Lost Chapter and will look fairly similar. Luden's Tempest is just Luden's Echo with a burst of movement speed attached to the proc. Everfrost is just Hextech GOP, but in the center of the spray it will root your targets instead. And Leandri's Anguish does percentage damage, just like old Leandri's, but it gives stats that a Lost Chapter item typically would. Not to be a downer, while all of these are great items, the other AP Mythics synergize much better with the kits of junglers for the most part. First up is Hextech Rocket Belt. It's the old proto belt, but it gives you a burst of movement speed towards enemy champions. This is insane for champions like Echo or Gragas who want more tools to close the gap between them them and their opponent. Next is Night Harvester. Just like Rocket Belt, it gives health, AP, and ability haste. But the passive is nasty. Hitting an enemy champion will deal an extra burst of damage and movement speed. This passive has a cooldown per enemy champion. Guys, Karthus and Fiddlesticks. That's all we're gonna say. Lastly, there's Riftwalker. This gives health, AP, ability haste, and omnivamp on top of an insane passive. For each second in combat, you deal 3% more damage. At max stacks, which is 5, all that extra damage becomes true damage instead. Champions who love drawn out fights such as Silas, Nidalee, or Talia might really like this item. But as we said before, there's a problem. These 3 items don't give any mana, so you'll be running out of it pretty quick. The presence of Mind Rune is also being nerfed this preseason, so that might not fix all your issues. It's not an elegant solution, but what we might suggest is going Tear of the Goddess early on which now costs 400 gold and just sitting on it. It'll give you a lot of mana to work with, and then you can rely on your jungle item's mana region on top of that. Maybe Riot will come up with a better solution than that, but if you want to abuse these new items then we'd recommend this solution for fixing your mana issues. If you're building a Lost Chapter Mythic though, you won't have to worry about your mana. As for Legendaries, AP items remain largely the same. Just like before, all these items are relatively the same with minor differences and are still built in the identical situations they were before. There are two new items to mention though. Demonic Embrace is a new AP Bruiser item that applies damage over time, much like Leandri's. While this dot is on an enemy champion, you'll gain resistances, which increases based on how many targets you've affected. Then there's Cosmic Drive. This is very likely one of, if not the most overpowered item on this preseason patch. Any high MMR player understands the value that movement speed has, and this item has permanent uptime on it. Unfortunately, besides Lily and Talia, many of the AP jungle champions don't really benefit from this kind of in-combat movement speed. It's still good to be aware of it though since it might just be so OP that you build it on everyone anyway. And that about wraps up this guide. This preseason is going to change a lot about the game, but it definitely doesn't have to be confusing. The items are way simpler than they seem, and builds will begin developing soon as millions of players try them out. Hopefully this guide helps you get started playing immediately without losing your mind. See you next time!